For a long time, many residents have advocated for a quiet zone in Needham. Trains will not need to sound horns at the six railroad or grade crossings if the town installs enhanced safety measures. Two years ago, the select board decided to suspend efforts to implement a quiet zone. Now with renewed interest from a grassroots group called Safer, Quieter Needham, the proposal might come back on the table. Municipal producer Yu Xiaowen has the report. 83-year-old Lawrence Lipson spends lots of time tending his garden, but his retirement entertainment is frequently disturbed by the train horn sounding. It's unpleasant to be even sitting outside. There's a beautiful patio that I had built a few years ago and uh, an extensive garden. And you might want to read or listen to music or just have a quiet period. Living on Hillside Avenue, Lipson can hear the horn blaring as the train passes by three crossings, Main Street, Rosemary Street, and West Street. You hear the horn, then in a minute or two you hear the horn again, then you hear it again because they're so close. And that means back and forth, trains coming in and trains going into Boston. Needham has five public grade crossings and one private grade crossings at the Needham Golf Club. According to the regulation from the Federal Railroad Administration, or FRA, train engineers must begin to sound train horns for at least 15 seconds before reaching public crossings. The federal regulation also requires train horns to be sounded in a standardized pattern of two long, one short, and one long blasts. But the regulation provides an opportunity for municipalities to mitigate the effects of train horn noise by establishing quiet zones. In a quiet zone, sounding the train horn is not needed because of the installation of supplementary safety measures. In Massachusetts, 29 cities and towns have adopted quiet zones. Needham residents have organized in various groups in the past decade asking the town to install a quiet zone. However, at one of its meetings in February 2020, the select board voted to table discussion of this matter. I've been on the board 10 years, and it's always been one of these issues percolating. And we had the MBTA come in, we had Keolis come in, so we've had multiple discussions over the years, but it always came down to dollars. And we looked at the balance of money versus practicality and safety, and at the time we said, we don't think that it's practical to do this. Recently, a group of volunteers drew up a petition asking the select board to once again look into establishing quiet zones. In six weeks, they collected 500 signatures, including Lipson's. Lars Onyem is one of the authors of the petition and the founder of Safer Quieter Needham. Two years ago, his father moved into a senior apartment on Chestnut Street. He just, you know, couldn't even describe how it was waking him up in the morning or in the middle of the night and just bothers him throughout the day. He would always have his windows closed because, you know, the noise and so wouldn't get fresh air. According to the letter Safer Quieter Needham submitted to the select board, over 50 percent of those who signed the petition live more than one-fourth mile away from the nearest crossing, which Ang Yim said shows not just the residents living nearby are affected. Kate Winograd and her husband moved to Needham with their two young sons a couple of years ago. She said they were drawn to Needham for the easy access to Boston by the train. But the horn blasting at all hours is beyond what they expected. The expected sort of every hour, you know, commute trains are not as bad as when you're getting into the random 4 a.m. train, the random 11.30 train that lays on the horn. Um, and now with the Saturdays and Sundays, um, you know, you kind of hope you can sleep in a little bit on the weekends, even if you have kids, and maybe it's not going to be possible, but you hold on to that hope. Winograd and Ang Yim both mentioned the negative effect on people's experience with the businesses in town. You're supposed to enjoy your coffee outside at one of our restaurants with the train blaring by, or go to dinner with your little kids and have the train blaring by. Um, it just always struck me as something like, I, I think there's probably a better way. The James and, you know, there's that new medical arts building down on Oak Street that just opened. I, I just can't even imagine visiting a doctor, having that train come by, you know, blaring their horn and trying to have a maybe a serious conversation about something. Quiet zones require the average risk for all public grade crossings in that area to be less than or equal to the nationwide significant risk threshold. According to the FRA's Quiet Zone Calculator, the current risk level of all five public crossings in Needham with routine train horn use is 40 percent higher than the national risk threshold. It's like, well, wait a second, we're actually, in, in a way of saying, substandard. We're below the national average, and I just was shocked that we would be okay with that, that we would be willing to have our 
safety rating below the national standard. After selecting different scenarios in the calculator, Ang Yim found a quiet zone with enhanced safety measures would lower Needham's risk level at least 40 percent below the national risk threshold. Wait, so we're going to be able to get rid of the horns and improve safety all at the same time? Like, how would we not want to really consider this? Select Board Chair Matt Borelli expressed support for re-examining the feasibility of a quiet zone, especially given the recent schedule change of the Needham line. But he also stressed that the board would need to take a vote before they embark on the idea. I think it's worth looking at again because now that we have Saturday and Sunday service and the schedule has changed that it's every hour instead of different time periods. In 2015, Needham hired consultant Beta Group to conduct a feasibility study on upgrades needed to obtain a quiet zone waiver. The study showed a total cost of $1.3 million which includes upgrading all five public crossings with four quadrant gates and installing two quadrant gates at the Needham Golf Club, but does not include other costs of construction. If the benefit was just, you know, no train noise, that was one thing, but I think when you also make those changes, you upgrade the safety at some of these crossings, so that would, I think, offset some of the, the concern about the money, that it's not just being used for one thing. This effort to, to figure out a path forward on the trains is really a question of an investment in the town's long-term future. You know, what do we want Needham to look like? <laughs> what do we want Needham to sound like? Um, what do we want, why do we want people to come here, right? I want to be happy and comfortable here. I want to enjoy living in Needham. And if the horn is disturbing, let's do something about it. Matt Borelli says the next step is for the select board to decide this month on whether to include installing a quiet zone in its 2022 to 2023 goals. Then the town will hire a consultant to provide an upgraded feasibility study. For the Nintendo Channel News, I'm Yu Xiaoyuan.